for today's video, we'll be continuing my little series on early jet fighters. Except this time, we'll be detouring over to Japan, where a couple experimental fighters were in development late into the Second World War. One of these was the less known army fighter, the Nakajima Ki-201 Karyu. This was a more direct copy of the German ME262, albeit almost 10% larger across the board. While worth a video of its own, this never got past the drawing board. The topic of today's video, however, would do so. Also developed by Nakajima, although this time for the Navy. The Nakajima Kika. The Kika was smaller and simpler in design primarily to cope with a weaker engine in the hopes that it could still have somewhat equivalent performance. Ultimately, only one prototype would take to the air right before the war ended, although that's still better than the Army's efforts. Nakajima getting caught in the middle and forced to work on two competing designs probably helped neither of them. Although, of course, that's just speculation. In any event, the Kika is an interesting endeavor in its own regard. Pretty well known, albeit inaccurately, as Japan's 262, thanks to old documentaries and assorted video games. This isn't entirely accurate for a number of reasons we'll be getting into. It is, however, the popular view of this particular aircraft for better or worse, not helped by the origins of the entire design program. Both the Karyu and Kika originated from Japanese reports on the ME-262. Sources will differ on exactly when the Japanese took an interest, ranging from 1942 during prototype testing to 1944 during service testing. I've even seen an argument that the Japanese didn't see anything about the 262 until 1944. And yet another argument that the Kiko was never based on the 262 at all, and was, in fact, a development of a Japanese plan for a special attack aircraft that began in August 1944, with the online sourcing question, sent a manual going a step further, claiming that the idea the Kiko was based on the 262 is completely baseless, beyond the general, oh look, jets are viable. Regardless of which source you use, the Kika's story still really began in September 1944, when the Japanese first received reports of the 262. Those reports were enthusiastic to say the least. The attaché in Berlin sent back glowing reviews and both the army and navy took notice. The Japanese military as a whole requested Germany to send technical documents to Japan, as well as engineers and, if at all possible, complete airframes, as well as a production license for both the 262 and the rocket-powered ME-163 Comet. The Germans would agree to the request, putting together a technical assistance package for the Japanese. Among other things, plans for both the 262 and Comet, as well as a couple engines. A Yumo 004 jet and the HWK-509 rocket motor. While not quite a complete airframe, even these materials would have been a major boon for Japanese developments. Unfortunately for the Japanese, neither of those boats would reach Japan, nor would most of their cargo. Ro 501, formerly the German U-1224, departed Germany on March 30th, 1944. She would be sunk on May 13th around Cape Verde. For her part, I-29 left France on April 16th of 1944. 
the submarine would arrive at Singapore on July 14th, where her passengers disembarked, including one Aichi Iwaya, which will be important later on. The boat still carried most of her German cargo, however, when she was sunk later that month. On July 26th, 1944, I-29 was spotted on the surface by USS Sawfish. Four torpedoes were fired. And since this was mid-1944, three of them would hit and detonate. I-29 sank quickly with only one survivor. More critically, all that cargo would be lost. The loss of those two submarines would prove a major blow to the nascent Japanese jet program. The same held true for further failed attempts by German submarines to carry supplies to Japan later in the war. However, it was not a critical loss. The Japanese Navy still put out a request for a jet attack aircraft in September 1944 in spite of those losses. They went to Nakajima and requested a plane with the following requirements. A maximum speed of 693 kilometers per hour or 431 miles per hour, along with a range of 110 nautical miles, 204 kilometers, with a bomb load of 500 kilograms or 1,012 pounds. Alternatively, a longer range of 150 nautical miles, 279 kilometers, with a lighter bomb load. In this case, 250 kilograms, 551 pounds. You'll note that these aren't exactly large numbers across the board. That would be down to the weaker engines available to the Japanese, as we'll get into later. For now, the other requirements included a landing speed of 148 kilometers per hour, 92 miles per hour, and a takeoff run of 350 meters, 1,150 feet, when using rocket-assisted takeoff. That rounds off the performance specifications, but the Japanese also wanted folding wings. You'll sometimes see this cited as a requirement for use aboard aircraft carriers. However, near as I can tell, the Kika was never intended to be used on a carrier. Not that the Japanese had many of those left in late 1944. The folding wings were, instead, put in place to allow storage in caves and tunnels. Now, all of the above is the commonly cited chain of events. Again, Sencha Manual, and to some extent Japanese Wiki, goes a different route. That the Japanese Navy went to Nakajima in August with a request for a special attack aircraft powered by jet engines. With work on this continuing through September in various design stages the furthest along being the second option, resembling either the P-59 or P-80. Two engines mounted in the fuselage, with this replaced by nacelles in the third layout. It's at this point where you get the claim that Western sources are wrong, and the Kika isn't a result of the 262 reports. Make of this what you will. In any event, with these requirements in hand, Nakajima set about their work. Two designers, Kazuo Ono and Kenichi Matsumura, were tasked with developing the new jet attacker. While clearly resembling the 262, the design was not a direct copy. No matter which chain of events you subscribe to. It was smaller, of course, but it also didn't have the same swept wing. Or swept tail surface, for that matter while the tail itself was a far more traditional design. Moreover, the cockpit and nose were also different. And on top of this, the Kika also featured old-school fabric coverings for the control surfaces, even if the aircraft itself 
was all metal and construction. On screen now, you have plans of the Kika and the 262 side by side. It really drives home how different the two aircraft are beyond the superficial similarity. The 262 influence is there, particularly in the engine cells and overall layout. But the Kika was its own thing in just about every other aspect. Especially if you subscribe to the theory that Sencha Manual puts forward. Regardless, at this point, the airframe development went along with relatively little in the way of problems. With the first mock-up produced in January 1945, while the first prototype was ready for ground testing by the end of June 1945. Considering the initial requirements was put out in August or September of 1944, that meant a turnaround of about nine months. That was fairly quick by any standard, but especially a situation like late war Japan. Even if this were a direct copy of the German plane, which it isn't, it would be remarkably fast. However, in a mirror of the 262's own development, the engines lag behind the airframe. Three different engines were proposed for the Kika over the course of its development. The first attempt came with the Su-11. This was a motor jet in the vein of the Campini design in Italy. Ultimately, this entire concept proves something of a dead end. In simplest terms, a motor jet is a piston engine that drives a compressor. This would compress air into a combustion chamber where fuel would be injected and in turn ignited, thus providing thrust to push the aircraft along. However, and this is especially true of the Su-11, it provides less power than a true jet engine. In this case, only 200 kilograms, 441 pounds of thrust. Even with two engines that only provided a combined 400 kilograms or 881 pounds of thrust. Recognizing that this was severely underpowered, the Japanese shifted to a newer engine, the Ishikawajima Ni-12, which could output 340 kilograms, 750 pounds of thrust for a combined total of 680 kilograms or 1,500 pounds of thrust. Even this wasn't enough, despite the Kika being a relatively light aircraft. Things stalled out at this point, which is where we return to I-29. Remember Aichi Iwaya, the officer who disembarked in Singapore? He left the submarine carrying some plans from Germany. Among others, an ME-262 operations manual, photographs of the BMW 003 engine, and a single cutaway drawing of that engine. Through sheer determination and ingenuity, the designers at Ishikawajima managed to come up with a new engine. Based on the BMW 003 cutaway, this was the Ni-20. Unfortunately, it was still fairly underpowered at 475 kilograms, 1,047 pounds of thrust. Foreign designs were often pushing more like 1,500 to 2,000 pounds of thrust. This is taking nothing away from the Japanese engineers. They should be commended for taking so little material and producing an engine that was at least in the same weight class. They replicated the BMW 003 on the equivalent of pictures in a Wikipedia article. They did it quickly, too. Work began in December 1944, and the first engine was ready by March 1945. And in the end, the Ni-20 would prove to be powerful enough, especially because, again, the Kika wasn't particularly large, featuring a wingspan of 10 meters, 
32 feet 10 inches and a length of 9.25 meters 30 feet 4 inches with a height of 3.05 meters 10 feet and a weight of 2,300 kilograms 5,071 pounds empty. Even the maximum takeoff weight was only 4,312 kilograms or 9,506 pounds. For comparison, the 262 was 10.6 meters long, had a wingspan of 12.6 meters, and a maximum weight of 7,130 kilograms. Regardless, that wraps up the background and the design details. So let's look to the final fate of the Kika now. The prototype was disassembled in July 1945 and moved to a naval airbase for flight testing. This was, of course, very close to the end of the war. Delays due to a loose nut getting sucked into one of the engines pushed things back further. This accident occurred on July 14th with repair work finished on July 27th. Taxi testing concluded on August 6th, 1945. And on August 7th, 1945, took the Kika to the skies. You'll often see this first flight cited as requiring rocket assistance, but near as I can tell, that wasn't the case. Regardless, the Kika took off smoothly. The new attacker flew for 20 minutes with no real complaints other than the length required for takeoff. There were no major issues in the handling beyond the usual quirks of a prototype. Slightly too sensitive with some minor directional stability problems. That said, this flight took place the day after the bombing of Hiroshima. By this point, other than pride in their engineering, the Japanese were too late to get any use out of the Kika. A second test flight was attempted on August 11th anyway. This time, the Japanese tried to fit rocket-assisted takeoff units. Those were probably mounted at a poor angle, resulting in the aircraft jolting back onto its tail until the rockets burnt out, at which point the nose crashed to the ground, causing a sudden deceleration. The pilot aborted the takeoff at this point, though the brakes failed to slow the plane. Ultimately, the Kika came to a halt just short of the water's edge. And it's here where the story ends. The prototype couldn't be repaired before Japan surrendered on August 15th. And the second prototype was never completed. 23 more airframes were also around in various stages of completion. Several of those were brought to the United States for study post-war, with only two surviving today. One is in storage in Maryland, and seems to be cobbled together from different airframes. Another is on display in Virginia. This does bring us to the end of the video, but there's one final note I want to make before wrapping things up. You'll note I've been very insistent on calling this aircraft an attacker. That is deliberate. The Kiko was, first and foremost, an attack aircraft. Some sources will say a kamikaze, some will dispute the idea that the Japanese would use an expensive and difficult-to-fly jet for suicide attacks. Either way, the aircraft, in its original design, notably lacked guns. A fighter model was planned, but this never went anywhere. It would have been equipped with only two 30mm cannon with 100 rounds between them. As this was even further from completion than the attacker, you can see why I stuck with what I did for this video. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.